use maps to find out the location, population, geographical conditions, natural resources, climates, roads, topography and economic activities of different places. We use them when we travel and map seems to be a very common object. You might have studied in class 6 about making maps and you have also studied about maps that show heights. In today's class, let us learn more about reading and analysis of maps. Students, first of all, let us know what is a map. What is the difference between a map and a photograph of the same place that is taken from the space? Map is a representation of a whole or part of an area that describes spatial relationships of specific features. A map, unlike photograph, does not show any real features. But a photograph may not be able to show the amount of rainfall, the temperature or the languages that people speak there as map shows. Students. That is why from early times people made different types of maps depending upon the purpose. Let us start our lesson with the maps of early times. The earliest maps were made on the clay tablets and later they produced on leather, stone, wood and paper. Today. We even have maps produced on computers. Let us see the maps of different times in detail. Students, the earliest surviving maps are made by Sumerians on clay tablets about 4000 years ago. The Sumerians used these maps to keep the record of the large tracts of lands that the Sumerian temples owned. About 2600 years ago, Babylonians, also known as the people of the present day Iraq, made some of the earliest world maps. According to Babylonians, the world looks like a round disc. They draw the world as a circle with the city of Babylon at the middle of the circle. Inside the circle, there are many small circles that represent villages, rivers, marshes and mountains. The inner circle was surrounded by bitter river or salt water ocean with seven triangular islands. Like Babylonians, the Greek also believed that the world is like a round disk surrounded by ocean. The Greeks also prepared maps by arranging places from east to west and north to south placing Greece in the center of the world. Let us see how the Greek geographers created the map. Students, did you know that Anaximander was the first ancient Greek to draw the map of the then known world? He was considered as the first world map maker. The Greeks divided the world into three continents. Europe, Libya that is Africa and Asia. These three continents were separated by Mediterranean Sea. Students, you must have heard about Alexander the Great, a Greek king who tried to conquer the whole world. He also tried to conquer India around 2300 years back. The Greeks and after them the Romans wanted to conquer the world built colonies in far off places and trade with them. For this reason, they were very much interested in making maps and knowing about places near and far. Let us see how did maps help them. Students, did you know that the Greeks were the first to use latitudes and longitudes in creating maps? Let us see how this was done. At first, they found the places where the midday occurred at the same time. At first, they found the places where the midday occurred at the same time. Then, they tried to draw latitudes by joining places that had equal length of shadow at noon. With the help of these two types of lines, they drew a grid on the map 
locating places from east to west and north to south along the lines. Students, did you know that it took about 2000 years to finally get the correct longitudes and latitudes? Ptolemy was one of the most famous geographers of the ancient world who prepared detailed maps of the world using latitudes and longitudes. Students, in 1154, the famous Arab map maker Al Idrisi prepared a world map for his king. Let us know some interesting things about this map. This map shows south towards the top of the map and north towards bottom, placing Arabia in the center of the map. With legends written in Arabic, this map shows the complete Eurasian continent and only northern part of African continent. But it does not have any details of Southern Africa and Southeast Asia. Around the same time, Chinese also prepared the world map placing China at the center and Europe halfway around the globe, depicted very small and horizontally compressed at the edge. In this map, Africa was also shown from an Indian Ocean perspective, showing Cape of Good Hope. Students, did you know that before the Europeans discovered the books of Ptolemy, they were greatly influenced by the Bible in the making world maps. They divided the world into three continents, Asia, Europe and Africa surrounded by oceans. Around 1480s, Europeans rediscovered Plotini's books and were stunned to learn about his accurate description of location of places. Based on Plotini's books, the Europeans prepared new maps. Students, did you know who discovered America? Yes, it was Christopher Columbus who discovered America. During 15th century, when Arabs blocked the trade route to India across the Mediterranean Sea, Columbus went westwards and discovered America, while Vasco da Gama went around Africa and discovered sea route to India. Students, do you know Gerardus Mercator? Gerardus Mercator was the father of Dutch cartography. Mercator's map projection is known as Mercator projection. Most of the world maps that we use today are based on his projection. Mercator devised a method for showing the correct shapes and directions of continents with distortions of sizes and distances. Still, we use this method to show the world. Students, do you know that the method that we use today to show the correct shapes and directions of continents was devised by Mercator? Students, so far, we studied about maps of different ages. Let us see how this map making help in colonization, exploration and military use. <music> Students, can you guess how the map making was useful to colonial powers? When European powers colonized the entire continents. They sent map makers and others to explore different parts of the world and prepare maps. The map makers and other people on this expedition gathered information about different places, people living there, climatic conditions, crops and natural resources. With this, the colonial powers established a supremacy over these places and exploit their resources. Students, we all know the fact that India was under British rule for 200 years. Let us see how the map making helped British to explore India. In order to survey the entire country and prepare maps, the Department of Survey of India was established. James Rennell was appointed as Surveyor General and he prepared one of the first survey-based maps of India. Students, 
you must be familiar with the fact that Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world with 8,848 meters height. Did you know how it got the name Everest? In 1802, William Lambton started an important geographical survey in the world starting from Chennai to Himalayas to find out the length of the longitude and also the heights of various places. This survey was completed by Sir George Everest. Mount Everest was named after George Everest who measured its height for the first time using scientific methods. Students, many governments tried to keep maps secret so that enemies could not use them. But now, with advanced technology, it is not possible to keep the maps secret. Let us see how maps are useful now. Now, maps are used extensively in all areas of development such as for showing water resources, agricultural development, building roads, setting up new industries, schools, hospitals, etc. For example, a mobile network company uses maps of villages and towns to set up microwave towers to spread its network. Students, did you know what is thematic map? Generally, the map focuses on only one aspect. Such maps are called thematic maps. For example, the political map focuses on mandals, districts, straits, countries, capitals, etc. Physical maps show mountains, plains, plateaus, rivers, etc. Depending upon the type of map, the map makers use different kinds of symbols, colors, patterns, etc. Well students, did you know how to prepare a population map? To begin with, estimate the total number of people living in a place. Measure the total area of the place and divide the number of people by the area of place. Then you get the population density of that place. Students. Using this method, find out the density of population of your school. Students, if we observe maps clearly, we see different colors, patterns and symbols. Did you know why the map makers use different colors and symbols? Usually, map makers use their own colors and symbols. But in India, we follow the conventionals used by Survey of India. Let us see the conventional symbols on maps in detail. Students, so far you learned about the use of different colors and symbols to represent different features like forests, roads, wastelands, etc. on the map. Did you know how we can show the high and low places on maps? Students, the high and low places on the surface of earth are called relief features. You must have learned about contour lines in class 7. Let us see the relation between the relief features and contour lines. Contours are lines on maps joining places of same height measured from the sea level. Contour lines are also known as isolines, that is the lines joining places with some common features. Students, let's do a quick exercise using the knowledge that you have gained through this lesson. If you observe the early maps from Sumerians to Chinese, the map makers of all these countries place their own country in the middle of the map. Why did they do so? If your school management wants to start up a new branch in another place, what all the kinds of maps would be useful for them? Describe the life of people living in the northeast states of India based on the information given in Atlas. So students, hope this lesson gave you sufficient information about reading and analysis of maps as well as how maps are useful in our own lives.